Proverbs, the third chapter. <laughs> Proverbs, the third chapter. And verse five and six. Verse five out of the King James read, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Those two verses are very crucial and critical to our lesson today. As we learn something about this resurrected God, the resurrected Christ. I want to bring to our attention by way of review some of the statements that we made concerning this crucifixion, the burial, and the resurrection. We got to understand that God set something in motion that is so awesome, way beyond what you and I can imagine when it comes to this resurrection of Jesus Christ. I also told you that when Jesus died at Calvary, we have to wrap our minds around the fact that it wasn't just one man there. Physically, there was one man hanging at that cross, but God saw all humanity. You got to understand that. Jesus was representing all mankind when he died at Calvary. We got to get that. That's called identification, which I told you we're going to talk about in detail. Christ was at Calvary, and because of Christ being at Calvary, all mankind was crucified there at Calvary. Paul said, I am crucified. The word is, I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. And then you got to understand, not only did you identify with his crucifixion, but you also identified with his burial. And then not only were you identifying with his burial, but you had to identify with his resurrection. And that's what Ephesians says. It's difficult for Christians to get that in their mind once they've been born again. They don't understand this powerful thing called the law of identification. They got to understand that. And then I told you that once we was raised from the grave, raised from the dead, once Christ was raised from the dead, Ephesians says that was a tremendous working of the power of God. It's just a brief review. That was a tremendous working of the power of God. Now I told you that so, there's so many superlatives of adjectives used to try to describe the kind of working of power that God employed when he raised Jesus up from the dead. Right. And he said that same power that he used to raise Jesus up from the dead, he said is now at work in the believer. Mm -hmm. We got to get that. We got to start getting this. Yeah. And then he said not only is it at work in the believer, but when he raised him up, he says when he ascended up, he was seated at the right hand of the Father. The Bible said, we were seated in him. We were seated in him. We got to get that. And he says since we were seated in him, we need to know what part of us had been in, was seated with him. He says the spirit of man was renewed, 2 Corinthians 5, and I want you to go there, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, 20, 21, 17. It says 2 Corinthians 5, 17, but I want to go to uh, right down to verse 21. We must understand, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, the word in Christ is very crucial because the statement, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 
if any man be in Christ. That statement, if any man be in Christ, is very crucial because there was a time when men were not in Christ. But they were in the first man, Adam. Remember that? 1 Corinthians 15, you can read that to leisure. Everybody was in Adam. And the Bible said everybody that's in Adam, they die. Because of the work at Calvary, because of the resurrection, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we now have an opportunity to transfer from being in Adam into Christ. 1 Corinthians, I mean, Colossians 1.13. I want to show you this, then we'll go back to 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. Go to Colossians 1. And look at verse 13. It says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? Just for a brief review. He said, He delivered us from the kingdom of darkness. Ephesians 2 said, We was under the control or influence of the evil one, Satan. We walked according to the power of the course of this world. Prince of the power of the air. According to the course of this world, we walked. He said we was under that influence. But what Christ did, he delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Let me hear you say, I'm in the kingdom now. I'm in the kingdom now. Where we're having problems is... Is making a transition from being in darkness to the kingdom. So Colossians 3 says this. Let's look at Colossians 3. He said he done delivered us. Now let's look at Colossians 3. Look at verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ. We was risen with Christ. We was risen what? If somebody say. Who went up? Who was risen with Christ? The average person said, we saw Christ. He was raised. The average Christian will say, when he ascended, Christ ascended. But when you ask God who ascended, he said, we all ascended. When you ask God who was raised with Christ, he said, we were raised. Paul got that revelation from God. He said, when Christ was raised from the dead, we all was raised. You understand that? Now, the, uh, you got to keep in mind that the leaders of that day, once they found Christ has no, was no longer in the tomb, they tried to concoct a lie that say he did not rise. Most of you think, well, that lie was concocted to make it known that Jesus didn't rise. But I say to you today that he's concocting the same kind of lie to say that you wasn't raised. You don't quite get it. He lied to say Jesus wasn't raised and he's still lying to so that you, so he'll tell you wasn't raised. Until you accept the fact that you was raised with him and not received the lie of the enemy, you'll be able, you'll never be able to walk in this newness of life. Amen. So he didn't just lie on Christ, he lied on us because Corinthians say if Christ be not risen, then we be not risen. You understand that? So it's very important that you know that Jesus was raised. And you better, it's very important you know that the steps and the measures that the enemy will take or go through, methods he used, to try to get convinced folk that Jesus didn't rise. He's trying to convince you that you didn't rise because every time you do something like the old man used to do, he try to convince you that you're not new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to understand something here. I got to get to this quickly. You got to understand something there. You got to know that you were raised. And then the third 
Verse, it, it, verse 1 says, if you, Colossians 3, 1, if you then be risen with Christ, he says, seek those things which are what? Above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Yes. Verse 2, set your affection on things above, not on things on the what? Earth. The word affection here is the word mind. So he said, you know your spirit was raised, but now you got to get your mind seated where your spirit is. That's what Romans 12, 1 and 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He is simply saying, get a new figure on uh, your mind about who you are. Uh, now, if you could do that, he said it's important. And it's the same way, this thing that we call transition, a good illustration of it is, when you walk out of a dark, dark building into the strongest sunlight you can find, you have problems making a transition, stepping out of darkness into this marvelous light. It, we have a tendency to get blinded as to what has happened. We can't see. So pass the Lord open their eyes yes. of their understanding. Yes. That they may know something. Yes. I declare to you in a moment, I'm going to share with you in a strong way, the transitional period between coming up out of Egypt and going to the land of Canaan. It is symbolic of coming up out of darkness and going into this kingdom of Jesus Christ. There are some parallels and some similarities I want to draw upon that paint a picture that show you that God is saying, don't see East as a one-time event. See it as a one-time event with ongoing effects. you got to understand that. It still has power. The writers was not wrong when they said the blood has never lost its power. You got to understand that it happened one time, some time ago, over 2,000 years ago, but it still have present effects. And what he's simply saying is, after a period of time when something is set in motion, it has a tendency to slow down because of the pull of gravity, but not the blood of Jesus. It goes from glory to glory. You're with me? Now, let's look at these verses of Scripture. Let's turn now and make this parallel. I'm trying to show you that is important today. What has happened to the saints. They don't know that when Jesus was crucified, that was our crucifixion. When Jesus was buried, that was our burial. When Jesus was raised, that was my resurrection. Amen. But then we have a problem because he said the old man is dead. We have a problem with the old man is dead. If the old man is dead, then why is he still living? He said because you have not reckoned you have not accepted the fact that he is dead. Hallelujah. I want to repeat once again the statement that the man made. I don't have it with me, but I'll tell you. A man was praying. He said that, uh, Lord, am I, am I lost? He said, if I'm lost, then save me. And God said, you are lost. And he said clearly, the reason why you're lost is because when Christ died, I fully accepted his offering. I accepted his sacrifice completely. Let me hear you say completely. He said I completely, completely accepted his sacrifice. And when he died for your sins at Calvary, it satisfied me. Yes. But until what Jesus did satisfy you, mm. I can't save you. Yeah. <laughs> until you accept the fact that Jesus died long enough to be, notice this, accepted by the Father. Now I got to accept what God did for me so he can save me. Otherwise I'll 
I'll still be trying to be good to be accepted. Uh -huh. I'll be trying to do better to be accepted. Amen. But all of your righteousness is as filthy rags. Yeah. So until you accept the fact that what he did was enough. All right. And that nothing I can do is enough. Amen. I told you last week, whatever I do to try to get saved is disgusting to God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ain't gonna never be good enough Amen. to be accepted. And the question arose about our conduct and we'll talk about that. Where do that fit in? It's not by works, conduct. Come on. And any man shall be saved. Yes. But conduct is a direct byproduct of the saved life. Amen. It's not, conduct is not something that you use to orchestrate salvation. It's evidence that you have salvation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll talk about that. You see, and then I better interject this. Because somewhere along the line, so many people just receive Christ and there's no noticeable change in their life. And it's all right. I just believe in him. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Christ came about.